that a second time. Yeah, now we have audio. Wow, it's loud too. Sorry about that. Hey, bring that level down. Oh, that was almost a nice transition, wasn't it? Uh, yes, I am muted. Hello, Mr. Certainly. Hello, people in the chat. Hey, old crow. We got uh, C. Grover, Matambale. We've got a great uh, group over in the Discord chat. And uh, you ought to join us if you're over in Facebook or Twitch or even YouTube. Come on over to Discord. It won't hurt. It's free. Uh, lots of great people there. Lots of puns there. Uh, and, uh, so that was, yeah, that was some teenage engineering pocket operators that I was playing, uh, oh, there they are still on my overhead. Uh, the, what is that? The tonic? That's, the, that's a cool drum one. And the arcade. I thought the arcade was appropriate because we're doing arcade stuff and this one's got lots of, uh, 8-bit arcade sort of sounds. Let me get that out of there now. Um, the, oh gosh, there they go. They're now going to play that. I've unplugged them. Set them over here. So the, uh, let's see, the weather in Los Angeles is not as cold as wherever you are. So I should probably just stop talking about it right there. Uh, it is, it is a little um, rainy. We got that going for us. All right, I'm going to tweak these levels a little more. I think I was yelling into my mic when it peaked up at negative two. Try to get a better average. Where's my mic? There it is. All right, how's that? I think that's pretty good. So... Uh, lots of great stuff we've got going on on the show today. You can see we've got uh, Steven Universe Gauntlets. It's another Steven Universe project today. Have you started watching this show if you weren't already a fan? Uh, I've just watched a few episodes and some round, uh, some uh, roundups, some roundups on YouTube. It's a fascinating show. Really wild. Really cool. Uh, so go check it out. So we'll do a project today from that. But first, let's take care of some other stuff, such as we've got... Jobs. Help wanted. It's the Adafruit Jobs Board. This is it right here. That's the Adafruit Jobs Board. Let me find that. Uh, this is in a browser right here. This is jobs.adafruit.com. And as you can see, uh, there are all kinds of great jobs that have openings. There's also places where you can post your skills if you're looking for jobs. And uh, this is some new stuff. Summer camp teacher. These people are prepared. Uh, they are getting ready. Uh, Oh, Old Crow's son is a huge fan of Steven Universe. Yeah, check out Steven Universe cosplay, too. The thing we're doing today is kind of a cosplay thing. Uh, lots of great cosplay from that show. Very cool. Uh, and uh, the music, too. I don't know if you were able to tune in last week, but I played uh, the Steven Universe tune theme song on my um, Palm Gem on a Circuit Playground Express. I've noticed there's some pretty good music in that show, too. Lots of uh, songs that characters are singing in the, in the show. Lots of dancing, too. Uh, but back to jobs. So here they are. Job board, it is completely free to post jobs. It's completely free to post your skills if you're looking for work. Post your resume up there. Uh, another little thing we've got here, piece of business, is fisticuffs. This is our 10% off coupon in the store. I'm not going to punch anyone, I promise. Uh, but Fisticuffs, that's our coupon code, and you'll see why in a bit. But that is going to get you 10% off in the Adafruit store. So if you are looking to buy some cool parts to put together a project, throw them in your cart, you're going to get 10% off on them, and that's good on anything in the store except for software, gift certificates, and subscriptions. So head on over to the Adafruit store, and uh, when you're checking out, Type in the word fisticuffs. That brings us to our product of the week. So the product of the week is this little guy. This is the bicolor LED 8x8 matrix. So it's a, a little 8x8 display uh, along with the board that makes it easy to run. Let me plug one in. I've got one right here. So that's, that's the matrix uh, display. There is the uh, ST16K33, I believe is the chip, but maybe not on the bicolor. But that runs the, uh, that library runs this on circuit Python. So if I can find a spare USB power, here we go. I'm going to plug in, uh, I've got an itsy bitsy uh, M0 here running. And you can see we're only using, only use only use only use wires, power ground, and a uh, data and clock line on the itsy bitsy in order to power this. Uh, it's a little bright. Let's see if I can at least give you some reflections of the light. 
Uh, so we can talk to that display really easily and we can wire it with just four wires thanks to that backpack. Otherwise, you're talking about uh, there's a red and a green LED per square. So you can see we can actually get uh, four colors if you count black. So off, red, green, and yellow if we combine the red and the green. Uh, and you can... Oh, voice is a little hot. Thanks, Matamale. I'm going to... Or uh, C. Grover. I'm going to drop that down a little bit. And uh, so if you go and check that out in the store, uh, you'll get some info. There's a bunch of different uh, backpacks that uh, run different displays. There's round uh, matrix displays. There's a bar graph style one. Uh, they are typically a lot of wiring if you want to run one of these on a breadboard, but the little backpack makes it easy. And now that it runs in CircuitPython, I can show you. Here's the code that I've got running this. Uh, let's see. Here's Moo. Let me move that out of the way. So that is all that it takes. Um, I'm being super inefficient with the code here because I just set it up very quickly. So it's not optimized at all, but this is a little uh, example that brings in this HTK, uh, HT16K33 LED matrix module library. So I'm importing matrix from that library. Uh, and then I'm talking over the I squared C bus. Uh, and then we've got easy commands. We've got matrix.fill, and that just fills the thing. We've specified up here earlier that it's an 8x8 display with two colors uh, per LED. And then I can go and talk to it like a caveman here. I'm just saying, hey, matrix on spot 0x and 0y, let's make the color green, which is the 1, or red, which is the 2. I can hold that back up so you can see it doing its cool thing. Uh, or if I choose the uh, number three, it's going to fill in the yellow, which really doesn't display here too well. Uh, and then I've, that's what I'm doing when I start it up, and then I'm just running through some little loops of, of passing uh, different colors and patterns and so on. Uh, so it's dead easy to use and lots of fun inside of CircuitPython to drive these little displays. Um, and we even have ones that double them up, so you can do a pair of those side, side by sides and get a pretty decent sized display. Um, and yes, Mr. Certainly in the Discord chat says I squared C makes it so much easier. For sure. In fact, if you go into the store and you look at that, uh, down at the bottom of the page, you'll see the bare um, LED matrices. Just click on one of those and you'll probably see an example of one on a breadboard wired up with uh, all whatever 16 pins that it's got coming off of it and uh, resistors are off of each one. It's a, a lot of work to get those to run. So. The backpack makes it a lot easier. Uh, in fact, I think there's also a feather. Do I have one? I might have one. Let me wander over here. Let's see. I think there's a feather backpack for this. I just reorganized stuff in the shop, cleaned up a little bit, and moved things, and uh, therefore I'm slow to find them. Uh, I don't see it. But yeah, we do have a feather uh, wing that drops on and has a pair of those uh, small-sized uh, matrix displays on them. So go check that out. They look awesome especially in real life. They, they don't look as good on the video. All right, uh, what's next? Hey, I know. Let's get set up for this thing. In fact, I've got to move some stuff. Whoa. I just got a huge echo. I hit, uh, I have Griffin PowerMates plugged in, which I use for uh, video editing, and one of them, when I tap it, it adjusts the volume. So it just turned on my system volume, and we got a crazy echo. Uh, all right, so I'm going to zoom in on a little display here and show you some good uh, make code arcade stuff. So why don't we hit it? All right, let me move that out of my face. Um, first off, before we get started, check it out. You can now see the on start loop. It's uh, kind of this olive green color, but I was working uh, with Peli on the make code team, and we're actually going to make it kind of a deep blue green so that it shows up. It's just all just to deal with the chroma key. I'm using a green screen to knock out the background so that you can see me through it. Uh, so, sorry, I didn't get that one fixed in time. Pelly, I know he actually put it into the beta, but I haven't uh, reloaded this. And I'm not going to live on air, because that's crazy. So, uh, what I want to talk about today in Make Code Arcade is placing and moving sprites. So, when we create a sprite, I'm going to move some of these blocks out of here. 
uh, you can see we've got our set sprite, and I've given it a name, Adabot, and then we've drawn in our sprite, and you can see I've put some little red marks in the corners here, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so if I take from the sprites set sprite position to, and then a number block, and let me move one I've prepared already into here, uh, you can see that now when the game reloads over here, it's going to place the sprite at a position on screen that's 120 pixels over and 33 pixels down. Uh, so the 00, zero the origin is in this upper left corner here. Now, when I position that, this block actually allows me not only to change the numbers with a slider or by typing them in, but I can also use this crosshairs, which is super convenient. I can just say, you know what, I want my sprite to begin the game right in this position so I can place it. Uh, now, if we want to move it around, inside of this controller block, I have move sprite with buttons. So I've already created one of those blocks and I'm gonna drop it into the block here. So I'm saying move Adabot with buttons. So now if I come over here and I can use my arrow keys to move my Adabot sprite around. Now you'll notice a couple things. It is moving off the screen, uh, which you may or may not want for your game. And there's a very easy way to keep it on screen, which is also in sprites. I have, it's under this area called effects, set my sprite, stay on screen, on or off. And there's actually a couple of options uh, that you can use here, but I'm gonna set this to stay in screen on. And now when the game reloads and I move my cursors, you'll see it stops. And that's why I drew those red marks into there, just to show you that no matter what you draw, your sprite is gonna be a certain dimension. This is 16 by 16 pixels in this case. So the corners of that are gonna hit these walls and that's where your sprite is gonna stop. Uh, and the last thing is a really convenient little block in that same area called uh, show physics on or off. And all that does is give us coordinates and velocity. So we can see which direction we're traveling in with that V line. And we can see what coordinate we have reached with the upper left corner, I believe it is, of the sprite. And so lastly, what I wanna do is show you inside of my actual uh, game here. So I've got my, in the overhead here, I'm using buttons, I've got a TFT display, and I have a feather M4 running this. And you can see we got the same thing live on a real game style display. So that is how you set the position of a sprite and move it around really easily inside of Make Code Arcade. All right. Uh, yeah, so I, I definitely found these TFT displays uh, show up on camera at an angle a lot better than dead on. There it is, dead on. I'll focus it. Uh, it kind of gets blown out, but at a little bit of an angle. I'm going to try refocusing it. You can see, there you can see that display kind of nice and crisp. You can probably even read those numbers as we move our Ada bot head around in this exciting game called Move Ada Bot's Head Around. Uh, but you can imagine that as we uh, dive deeper into make code, we're going to add things like uh, power ups or food, as they're called, uh, enemies. Um, platforms, sort of levels and walls and collision, collision detection, effects, display, there's all kinds of stuff you can do in it. So uh, take a look if you're interested in the Make Code Arcade at arcade.makecode.com. Uh, all right, so let's uh, now dive into our project of the week, which is these gauntlets for the same character, Garnet, that I built the palm gems for last week. So let me pop open uh, my Firefox here and show you what we're making. So here is the character Garnet, and she, when she needs to battle, this is her weapon. She uh, basically grows out of thin air these huge gauntlets, and her fists get all big inside of them as well. Uh, so I thought this would be a fun project to build using the um, Circuit Playground Express because we have an accelerometer built on, we can do um, punch detection or you know, shake detection that will allow us to do a sound effect and a light effect when we encounter that rapid shift in uh, one or more axes on the accelerometer. So 
let's jump back actually into our make code. And I'm going to hop into a different tab here. Uh, oh, there's the color I wanted. Yeah, that's the one I set it in. Pelly, you see that? See that nice green, folks? That's what we want. Uh, let me just adjust my cropping so you can see that a little better. There we go. Uh, and shoot that over here. Good. Okay, so um, this is our formerly green so that we can't see through it. Now this kind of blue-green block. This is our start loop. So what we're going to do is we want to create code so that our um, Circuit Playground Express, when it's uh, running, it's going to be a uh, yellow glow. So we're going to use this to sort of backlight, backlight the star on the gauntlet that we make. Um, so what we're going to do is right away, we're going to set the brightness up to pretty bright. I'm setting it to 120, which is quite bright. Usually I leave these at 20. Uh, maximum is 255. So I'm going to set the brightness of the NeoPixel ring. That's what that's referring to is the 10 NeoPixels running around the outside of the board. Uh, to a value of 120, and I'm going to set them all to yellow. Now, you may have seen, sometimes I'll use this show ring block, which is nice if you want to do patterns. Um, but when we're just setting everything to the same color, I'll throw that away, and I'll just use this guy right here, the set all pixels to uh, yellow block. So, oh, I just realized I'm, there we go. Hi, it's me. Uh, I'm behind the make code. Uh, so, the other thing you'll see I'm doing here is I'm setting the tempo. So I'm going to play some uh, sort of a sound effect, but the way I want to play the sound effect is um, there are kind of two ways in make code to do this. One, you can use uh, a drop-down item or a drop-down item from a list uh, that is pre-made canned sound effects or songs. Uh, so if you head to music, you can see we've got these play sound. Uh, there's power up. Power down, jump up, jump down, ba ding, wah 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 wah, magic wand and siren. And they're very nice, but I also have gotten a little tired of them. So rather than use one of the canned ones, I just want to make a little sort of power up sort of glimmery sound. So I'm going to do that with the um, music notes or tone, play tone instead. So when you're using that play tone, you want to set the tempo. Uh, so I head to music and I find the set tempo to, in this case, it defaults to 120. And I'm going to have that. I'm going to set it to 60 beats per minute. So that's all I'm doing in the startup block. And then to use the shake, what I'm going to do is in input, you can see the second block here, it says on shake. So if I drop one of these in, you can see we've got uh, shake, which is a sort of a black box of, well, it's, it does what it says. When, when the accelerometer experiences a rapid change of, of high values, that's probably because it's being shaken. So that one's pretty reliable, but you don't have a lot of options for tuning it, and it'll work great in this case. You can also use things like um, just checking the gravity, essentially what's the high magnitude value uh, on which axis, x positive and negative, y positive and negative, z positive and negative, and those are tilt up, tilt down, tilt left, tilt right, face up, face down. Uh, there's also a free fall, which detects uh, the, I guess, rapid change of whichever one was getting around nine, uh, was it feet per second squared, uh, set to zero because it's falling through space. And then you can also set to three Gs, six Gs, and eight Gs. So we're going to just get away with using shake in this case. So I've already got a shake block here set up. And then what happens when we shake, I want to set... Um, kind of a flash of light, so I'm setting all the pixels to white, and I'm also boosting the uh, brightness up to 255. Then I'm playing this little song. So if you uh, click on the play tone uh, value of hertz, um, so that's the frequency in cycles per second, uh, you can play notes on this little limited uh, input piano keyboard, and you can see the highest note you get is this high B and it's 988 hertz, so it's not very high. Uh, so I boosted these up to, what did I do, 3000, and then I'm dipping down a little bit, so I'm going beetle little little kind of noise like that. Uh, and I'm doing these very quickly, so 16th beats, and then the last one I'm holding a little longer, which is this quarter note. Uh, and then after we play that sound, we're going to set all the pixels back to yellow, and we're going to drop the brightness back to 120. So that's the little cycle. Now you can see over here in the simulator, uh, if I add a on shake block, I actually get this um, shake button. 
Oh, thank you, Mr. Certainly. It's 9.8 meters per second squared, not feet. It's 32, right, for feet, something like that. Um, a quick aside, this used to really screw us up a bit in the, uh, when I was uh, in my earlier days of computer graphics and visual effects, there were two pieces of software that combined, Wavefront and Alias. And one was a Canadian company and one was an, a, a U.S. company. Uh, and some things in the software were working in metric and some were not. They were imp imperial and, and a lot of the effects stuff was defaulting to like 9.8, but it actually wanted you to type in 32 and it didn't tell you what the units were. So, uh, yeah, the, the metric versus imperial crops up in funny places. Uh, so if I click this shake button over in the simulator, it's as if I've shaken it since they didn't want you to grab and shake the Circuit Playground Express violently in the interface. But when I click shake, you'll see it's going to do the light thing. We're not hearing the sound right now because I don't have it piped through the system. Uh, but we can check it out on this one. So let me um, plug some power. I'm going to steal that from our little matrix display here and plug in power into the Circuit Playground Express. And let me get myself a little bit of extra length on that cord. So uh, I just pressed the reset button so it would restart the program. So there you can see that's the yellow. Uh, it's quite bright. And then I'm going to shake it and you can listen. Right, and you saw it flash. Okay, so it takes a bit of tuning uh, of like the timings and how many notes you want to play, what the beats per minute are, what the, the tempo is going to be like, as well as the uh, do you need a delay uh, to, to, to actually register the light. A lot of times, if you add delays, it's just too slow. You, you want an effect like this to be pretty quick. Um, so that is the, the coding side of it. Uh, you probably know I'm a big fan of this case that we have, this enclosure for the Circuit Playground Express. Um, and so that's what I have it mounted in. There's our default Circuit Playground Express, and I'm just putting it inside of this little uh, plastic or polycarbonate plastic case. And you don't necessarily need that for this project, but I do find it gives you a lot of great light diffusion from a bunch of angles uh, compared to the bare NeoPixels. So um, it's, a, it's a good one for these types of prop things. It makes it look a little less like a bare circuit board and more like a, a finished uh, or partially finished prop or cosplay element. Uh, in fact, I know uh, Ms., uh, Old Crow said that his son is into Steven Universe, and I know that if you ever want to do Steven Universe cosplay, I think you just need a short t-shirt and to glue one of these to your belly button because he's got like a, a glowing gem in his belly button. <laughs> So there's a free, uh, very, nearly free, very quick and easy um, uh, cosplay emergency costume idea. So now what I'd like to do is step on over to the workbench and we'll have a look at building up a uh, gauntlet so that you can uh, wear this on your wrist. So as you can see from the overhead camera here, and I'm going to step over there, uh, we've got... Craft foam here. So uh, let's, oh, let me use my nifty changer to go to the main camera view and the bench overhead. Uh, so step over here. The, um, you've got a lot of options for building the gauntlet. What I did was I started out just in some uh, cardstock. So I took some cardstock uh, and folded it into this shape. You could get away with a coffee can or some like a big protein powder plastic jug kind of thing. Um, but I decided to just sort of prototype it in paper. Uh, and I was thinking originally of doing fingers because there's these bent or straight fingers. And I had, had my reference. So I printed out um, some reference to look at. Here's some fan uh, grabs, I think, from the show that, or from a video game that are used for people who are doing cosplay. There's a couple of different designs that the... Uh, um, color styling has evolved over the seasons, but the um, main sort of uh, element here is this gauntlet part, this tube or cylinder. Uh, so I decided something around this size would be good and it would allow us, uh, let me grab my Circuit Playground Express that I just left behind. So I decided this would give us uh, a pretty good 
size of the cuff versus the, the star that we're going to light up. Um, and that gave me an idea of the type of size of material I was going to be looking for. Then I headed to a craft store and I picked up a bunch of this um, craft foam. So this is this soft, flexible, clo close-celled uh, craft foam. And you can see it really quickly uh, works itself into the type of shape that we need and size that we need. So I figured, yeah, some of this would be great. Um, one thing you can do if you want is uh, buy enough of it to double it up to make it thicker, uh, especially if you were to use some adhesive and make kind of a two-ply out of it. That would be a, a sort of a nice thick um, piece of material for the structure. I went with a single piece of it, but I decided to reinforce it at the bottom and the top. So if we start off with, I'm going to use this scrap piece here, uh, and I'll switch over to the bench view. So if we start off with something like this, um, I'm going to just make a little mock-up version here. What I did was, uh, there's a craft foam glue that's, that's designed for this, and it works well, but it also takes about a day to cure. Uh, and I don't have that kind of patience. So I used it in a couple of places, and then uh, after clamping and letting it dry, I said, forget about this. I'm going to use some mechanical fasteners, and I'm going to use hot glue. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just using a little uh, scribe tool to poke a hole through. And then we have these great little um, plastic rivets that are sold as cardboard rivets in the Adafruit store. And they work great for this, so it's just, it's just a little pop rivet. Um, I can push that through this material, and it'll go through probably five or six layers of this stuff. So if you have a built-up area, uh, it'll work really well. And so all I'm doing is pushing that through, and then there's a little receiving cap that'll head over the split end. And there you go. You get a, a really nice uh, connection. You may or may not like the, the black contrast. It doesn't match the character exactly, so you could paint over that later with some uh, acrylic craft paint uh, or use some red gaff tape or something like that to hide those. But that uh, works really well, especially if you don't have the patience for glue. Uh, or you could use it in combination with, with the glue. So that's how you would... I won't set that third one in there. So that's how you'd start out. And then um, since this is kind of floppy, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a, a way to mount the battery pack on the inside and the Circuit Playground Express on the other. So I cut a thin um, sort of strap of this material. And you can use, um, you can be a little more careful and use a straight edge. But that'll be good enough for this demo. Um, and you'll probably want to use a cutting mat and not your table. <laughs> so what I did was I just fed a strip of the same red foam rubber through the back of my Circuit Playground Express case and then glued that. So this is one case where I didn't want the pop rivets, uh, so I just used that craft glue and uh, I made some clamps with some spring clamps and some thin pieces of wood so it would be large enough to set that on and clamp it down while that dried. So now that's on there really well. You can peel this off if you need to, but it's not going to go anywhere. And then on the inside, I cut a little slit and hung my, my battery pack, and I'll show you that on the finished uh, one uh, in a second. But So once I had this on here, uh, I realized I didn't want it sort of banging around on my wrist a lot, so I needed a way to center it as well as to give it some structure. So I decided to take some uh, foam core. So this is some black-sided or black-faced foam core. Uh, and you can see what I did. I took my cuff and I just traced it out with a pencil and cut it carefully with a hobby knife. And now I have a cap to put on either end. And then I cut the um, uh, centers out until I could fit my fist through and then a little bit wider for my wrist. So that is how we got to this. And you can see I added some decorative uh, bits. There's these little diamonds on the ends uh, of the knuckles. But here you can see those are my um, foam core. You could paint this in, in black if you didn't want anyone to see, see the edges of that. You could neaten that up maybe with a Sharpie or some, some paint. Uh, whoops. And same with the top. Right inside of there you can see there's my battery pack. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And you'll see now our uh, glowing star. I just cut out a, a foam star and used a little hot glue. And that was the other thing I was going to say is when I got tired of waiting for uh, the proper glue to cure or to dry, a tacky glue, I decided to try little dabs of hot glue. I don't want to melt through this stuff, so you don't want to use a lot of it, but with little dots of hot glue, things stick uh, really well. So these pink stars are on with the hot glue. Uh, my foam core discs are in there with a little bead of hot glue running around it. And I also used the hot glue to get the star on there. So now you can see I can uh, let me switch cameras here again. So I can set that on my wrist and big vision. Now when I punch, I get that nice uh, punching effect. And now you have a pretty easy to make uh, prop for garnet. Uh, you could do, I, I started looking into doing different types of hand uh, like fist enlarger things at the ends. I started to use that same uh, technique with the rivets to make something that maybe would come out of that hole and be a giant fist like that. I didn't love it. Uh, I didn't really want to make tubes and, and notch them into knuckles. Uh, a lot of the cosplay props I've seen people have used toilet paper tubes and cut them at careful angles to put some 45s in them and, and make large painted too. So that's definitely... Uh, a possibility. What I decided would look pretty good in this case, especially if you're going for a simpler build, is I happen to have a red glove, a pair of these. So some fleece gloves will work pretty well and I think get the point across. You could dress those up more if you want. But that is my Garnet's Gauntlet with reactive punching power. So let me see if I can keep that on while I Head on over, see if I can use a mouse with that, uh, with that glove on. There you go, you can see that a little better that way. Let me get this out of the way. So there is a pretty quick and easy Garnet's Gauntlets. You could make a pair of these if you want, and uh, you could also get, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, Seagrow says, use a hockey player's glove. I was wondering, what are some good starting point things? Um, I even was wondering if I could get one of those giant Hulk foam fists and paint it up, but those are a bit uh, veiny and muscular and, uh, and overly detailed for this sort of cartoony look. Um, but definitely I think that'll, that'll pass muster uh, to, to any fan as a Garnet Gauntlet. Uh, and you could get much bigger with it if you wanted to, but uh, I thought this was, like I said, a nice size for the uh, available Circuit Playground Express size. So that is our build for the week. I think it's uh, a fun one. And if you uh, want to work on that project or work on it with someone, I think uh, you could help someone learn a lot about using microcontrollers in projects and coding inside of make code, which makes it really nice uh, and easy to get started with this type of project and then customize it. Uh, there's lots of different colors you could pick. You could make different songs and sound effects. So that is the project of the week. And uh, I'm just going to wrap it up here in a moment, but first I want to remind you that uh, now we know why Fisticuffs is our uh, our coupon code of the week, and that's going to get you 10% off in the Adafruit store and anything you want to get other than gift certificates, subscriptions, and software. Uh, speaking of subscriptions, I think we have uh, somewhere over 100 subscription spots left for the next Adabox, which will be coming in the spring. Uh, so if you want to subscribe, jump on it. It's uh, always a good deal. It's free shipping. You get some cool new thing before anyone else. The things that go in the Ada box are often sold out in the regular store for quite a while. Uh, and it's uh, a better bargain than buying it later. So I think it is $60 to subscribe. So go check it out at uh, adabox.com. We'll get you all the info you need and you can go and subscribe. So please go check it out. Um, and let's see, I think that covers it. So I'll be, uh, over in the chat. Um, we can take some questions if anyone has them before we go. We are just at about time. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Matanale says, there's a definite downside to cleaning your shop is trying to find things. In fact, I only just, like, I didn't move that much. I didn't clean that much, but yeah, it's still a little bit disconcerting. Like, where, where did things go? Uh, the 
Let's see, adhesive transfer tape would work well on that. On the phone, Andy Calloway, is that right? Adhesive transfer tape, all right, that's a good one to try. Uh, Yanusku says, in Mass Effect Andromeda, is a cool gauntlet used by Liam, one of the companions of the player. Gauntlets are cool. Oh, I also wanted to say that uh, when I was trying to come up with different materials to use to build this project, my wife suggested that I look at Epbot, and I've referenced her before, E-P-B-O-T. She does a lot of great cosplay. And my wife said she had some gauntlets that were more um, form-fitting leather gauntlet style made from craft foam. And she has some really cool techniques for um, distressing them and adding texture. In fact, she uses a, a clothes iron and some crinkled up aluminum foil to make impressions of a leather pattern and grain inside of the, um, the, that foam, which is really cool. I didn't need those kinds of effects here. I did, I did make some attempts at, um, I think I've thrown them out now, carving and heating using a heat gun and uh, doing some carving in, a, in the foam with an X-Acto and then hitting it with the heat gun and it kind of separates it out of it. Some really cool stuff as well as painting and so on. But we've got such primary colors in this project that we get to get away with using the raw materials, which is kind of nice. Uh, and let's see, yeah, I think that is all we've got. Uh, so I want to thank you. Hey, you do it. I'm just noticing the people over in the YouTube uh, chat, hello. Uh, welcome also. Sorry, I am. Hi, Ted Rogers. First time in the chat room. Hello to you too. Uh, I tend to check mostly the, uh, the Discord just because I can't keep track of so many things at once. But nice to see you all. Thank you for coming out. And uh, there will be a tutorial coming to the Learn Guide about building this project. And I'm also making some updates to uh, the MIDI Grand Central CC knob project. I'm going to add uh, rotary encoders next. And uh, maybe then go on to some slide potentiometers and other things. So uh, keep an eye out for updates on that as well. And so that will do it for it for today. So thank you very much for stopping by John Park's workshop. I'm John Park, and I'll see you next time. And uh, let's play some more pocket operator music on the way out. How about that? Let me hook this up. Uh-oh. Echoes.